Hey, this is Becky with the UT Extension Office in Tipton County, and I'm out at Lone Oaks Farm in Middleton, Tennessee. And I am with Ron Blair, who is our interim director out here of this whole complex, and our former fishery specialist here um, in the state as well. I've been getting calls already. It's February 5th, and I've already had people send me some pictures of weeds starting in their ponds. So I'm gonna ask Ron a little bit about a couple things that we can do to get started in February on a good path so we don't get overgrown and have things get out of hand before we know it. Cause it start, I mean, they are growing right now. So Ron, what are some things people can start doing right now? All right, first of all, you're gonna have to get out of the car, get out of the pickup. <laughs> you're gonna have to walk these ponds. Uh, at, at first glance, this one's clean. We just got a big flush last night, put some new water in the pond, freshen everything up, and it doesn't look like there's an issue here. But, uh, go right here, and already, Becky, you can see the one that you and Jeff get to call on all oh, the time. Yeah. Uh, Philomenus algae, pond scum, it's got a thousand names, right? Uh, Philomenus algae, extremely difficult to, to control, uh, but the trick is, I think you did some videos earlier today on using pond dyes. Pond dyes uh, are very effective early on because it, again, blocks that sunlight from reaching the bottom. In a pond like this, this has got a very, very shallow pond edge. Uh, so we already have filamentous algae, as you said, the 5th of February. So one of the quick and easy fixes, uh, this does not work on your koi and ornamental ponds. Uh, if you've got goldfish for whatever reason, We've got to be really, really careful. So before you start using copper sulfate in a crystal form or bluestone, uh, check with your county agent. You guys have, have probably got a brand new shipment of 2020 weed control manuals. There's a pond section in there uh, and it talks about uh, the toxicity of this chemistry and, and some use rates. So, it's, uh, but it's pretty easy to use. The one thing to keep in mind is, is this copper sulfate is is uh, is is not very soluble in water. So if you just put it into a, if you if you put that crystal in water, it won't do much. So we figured out a little trick how to do this. We're going to take some of our fresh pond water and and we're going to mix for this demonstration. We're just going to show you how to do this. Uh, again, check your weed control manual for your proper rate. But we're going to take that cup of copper sulfate. And you can already see, Jeff, I think, without, without uh, it's got a little blue in it, but the granules are still in the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's going to have to have some help. So, uh, we got some gloves? Yep. Yeah. No? Yes. Let me have one. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this copper sulfate is toxic to fish. So again, we have to, we always have to put a disclaimer in that, that uh, you need to know what's going on in the pond. Uh, this time of year with the cool and our oxygen levels real high, we don't, we're not worried about it so much. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna agitate this up. You can see, Jeff, if you want to come up, you can still see a little bit of a little bit of the granule still in there, but it's coming apart pretty well. And then again, this is a, a the copper compounds, whether it's whether it's Qtring Plus or whether it's one of the uh, Admiral or one of the liquids, or whether it's a, a granule, the copper compounds are contact herbicides. So we have to put it on the plant to kill it, right? And it'll do it very, very fast. Even in weather like this, you'll know in three or four days. Okay. So it happens very, very fast. But unlike the pond dyes that we want to cover the entire pond, we want to we want to treat the, the, the edges because that's where this filamentous is in the shallow side. So what we do is we take this pond and we're gonna, we're just gonna treat, don't ask me why I walk backwards, it's just the way I keep up. So, and basically what we're doing is, we're putting this, uh, 
we're going to put this down along that edge. It will disperse. If you get big mats here in another month, Becky, you're going to start getting a call that we've got these big bubbling mats. Uh, again, we can take this compound right here. We can throw it out on top of the mat. Remember, it's a contact. So uh, it takes quite a bit of material. Ron, now, oftentimes when we see mats, usually that's already dead, though. Is that already correct? Already dead, but there'll yeah. be enough green in it. Right. So uh, a lot of times, if you got a way to chop that up, uh, or at least mix it up, maybe with a boat paddle or something like that, because, again, the only way that this works is that we've got to come in direct contact uh, with the, with the with the algae. And so then we have the people that don't do anything about it, and then it's June fifteenth and July first, and they want to go fishing, and they can't because all That's this right. mat is covering. That's not an ideal time to use copper sulfate. Actually, it's almost impossible by that time. Uh, the the key to this filament menace control, and that's why I think you're doing this today, is to start today. Uh, because if you wait till April, May, water temperatures are up, oxygen levels are down, fish are in a little stress coming out of the winter, then all of a sudden you get these big mats, a lot of dead material, you start treating, then all that goes to the bottom, and we start talking about turnovers and oxygen issues. So the key to this is, start early, you gotta get out and look around these ponds, uh, even today, even after a big rain last night, you can still find it when you walk around those edges. Uh, don't so, be afraid of the chemistry. The, one of the other things is if it does get to be April and you do start to get large areas of it, you only should treat a portion at a time, is that? Perfect, yeah. So in this pond right here, it's about uh, it's a little bigger than a tent. So what we would do is we would, we would take this uh, every week. So Jeff, if you can show the culvert down there on the other end. So if this was mine and we were treating it, uh, then I would start about to cover it. And I'd come to about here, Becky, and probably make me a mark or a flag or whatever. Then next weekend, I do the other third. I, I do another third of it. Then the next weekend, I would go back and do all of it. That'll because help that decomposition yes, yes. and taking the oxygen exactly. for the fish. And again, later in the summer, that's especially important. Now, later in the summer, there's probably better chemistries. So contact the county agent. They know what's going on. We've got a great uh, new fisheries first responder in West Tennessee. They'd be glad to help you. Thank you.